Welcome back year two to our topics lesson. Last week we looked at Tutankhamun. This week we're going to look at Queen Cleopatra. He's still in Egypt, but 1,500 years after King Tutankhamun, a lot had changed in Egypt. The Egypt that Tutankhamun had known had long vanished. The kings had become very weak over the hundreds and hundreds of years, allowing foreign invasions such as the Persians, the Hittites and the Greeks. This is where our story begins with Cleopatra. She lived in a very strange world, a mix of Egyptian culture and Greek and many others. In our last lesson, we looked at the capital of Thebes and how Echinaten had moved to Amarna. Well, over the decades, things had changed once again and the capital now lay on the Mediterranean coast in Alexandria. This is where the Ptolemaic dynasty lived. Even the gods of Egypt were a strange mix of Greek and Egyptian. This was a strange world that Cleopatra lived in. Cleopatra was born in 69 BC. She died in August 30 BC at 39 years old. She was born a princess of Egypt. Her father was the pharaoh Ptolemy the 12th. Cleopatra was smart and cunning when she was growing up. She was her father's favourite child and learned a lot about how the country was ruled from him. This is Cleopatra's father, Ptolemy the 12th. Cleopatra's family had ruled Egypt for 300 years. They were the Ptolemy dynasty that had been established by the Greek ruler Alexander the Great. Even though they ruled Egypt, they were actually Greek from Greek descent and not Egyptian. Cleopatra grew up speaking, reading and writing Greek. Unlike many of her relatives, Cleopatra also learnt many other languages, including the ancient language that the Egyptians, like Tutankhamun, would have spoke. This is Alexander the Great, the founder of the Ptolemy dynasty. When Cleopatra was only 18 years old, her father died. He left the throne to both her and her younger brother, Ptolemy the 13th. Cleopatra and her 10 year old brother ruled Egypt as co rulers, so they ruled together. And this is her brother, Ptolemy the 13th. Because she was much older, Cleopatra took control as the main ruler of Egypt. However, as her brother grew older, he began to want more power. Eventually, he forced Cleopatra out of the palace and took over as pharaoh on his own. In 48 BC, Julius Caesar, as we can see, arrived in Egypt. He was the ruler of the Roman Empire. Cleopatra snuck back into the palace, hidden inside a rolled up carpet. She met Caesar and convinced him to help her to win back the throne. Caesar agreed and defeated Ptolemy's army at the Battle of the Nile, and Ptolemy's drowned in the River Nile. Cleopatra and Julius Caesar fell in love. They had a child named Caesarion. Cleopatra would visit Rome and stay in Caesar's many homes. Despite her love for Julius Caesar, Cleopatra wanted Egypt to remain independent of Rome. So in other words, she didn't want Rome to rule Egypt. Now, as the ruler of Egypt, she took on the role as the goddess Isis, just as the pharaohs had done before, as they were seen as the god kings. She was now the goddess pharaoh. She built up the Egyptian economy, establishing trade with many Arab nations. She was a popular ruler among the people of Egypt, both because she embraced the Egyptian culture of her ancient ancestors and the country flourished during her rule. In 44 BC, Julius Caesar was killed by others from the Roman government. One of the three leaders to emerge in Rome after Caesar's death was Mark Antony, which we can see in the picture. In 41 BC, Cleopatra and Mark Antony met and they fell in love. 
they formed an army against the other Roman leader, Octavian. Octavian, who we can see above, was the rightful heir of Julius Caesar. But Cleopatra wanted her son Caesarion to be Julius Caesar's heir, as it was his son, and to eventually become ruler of Rome. She hoped that Mark Antony could help her achieve this goal. So as we said, Cleopatra and Mark Antony combined their armies in order to fight Octavian. The two forces met at the Battle of Actium. Mark Antony and Cleopatra were defeated by Octavian and had to retreat to Egypt. The death of Cleopatra is shrouded with mystery and romance. After fleeing back to Egypt, Mark Antony returned to the battlefield, hoping to recover and defeat Octavian. He soon realised that he was going to be captured by Octavian. Upon hearing this false news that Cleopatra had died, Mark Antony killed himself. When Cleopatra heard of this news, that Mark Antony was dead, she became heartbroken. She also knew that Octavian would take Egypt from her and kill her. So, she killed herself by allowing a poisonous asp, a snake, to bite her. Later, Mark Antony would hear of this and he would take his own life. With Cleopatra's death, Octavian took control of Egypt and it became part of the Roman Empire. Her death brought an end to the Ptolemy dynasty and the Egyptian Empire. She was the last pharaoh of Egypt. Now let's have a few questions on what we've just learnt. So true or false? Cleopatra was the last pharaoh of Egypt. True. What Egyptian dynasty was Cleopatra part of? The Ptolemy dynasty, that's correct. What Roman ruler helped Cleopatra regain control of Egypt from her younger brother? Julius Caesar. What language did Cleopatra grow up speaking, reading and writing? Greek, that's correct. What Roman ruler did Cleopatra have her first son with, Caesarion? Julius Caesar, that's right. Now, true or false? The people of Egypt hated Cleopatra because she rejected Egyptian culture and destroyed the economy. False, that's correct. They loved her. What Roman leader did Cleopatra fall in love with after Julius Caesar was killed? Mark Antony, that's correct. Who won the Battle of Actium? Octavian, that's correct. How did Cleopatra die? She allowed a poisonous asp to bite her, that's correct. Last question. Cleopatra claimed to be the goddess. Which goddess? Isis, that's correct. I hope you enjoyed the lesson year two and found some wonderful things out about your country and its ancient rulers. Next lesson, we're going to look at Cleopatra's lost city that is beneath the sea in Alexandria. We'll also take a look at how people see her today in movies and plays. And we also looked at her life today. But let's take a look at who she really was, her personality, what she was like. I hope you found the lesson interesting. Cleopatra really was a wonderful woman an amazing pharaoh. Check on YouTube, there's a really good documentary called The Great Egyptians. It's episode two, The Real Cleopatra, by the wonderful Dr. Bob Breyer. Please check it out. Until then, take care and I'll see you soon. Goodbye year two.